Well, may the fourth be with you. You know, every time that's been said to me, I always remind folks I'm the real Captain Kirk from Star Trek, not uh, that Han Solo from Star Wars. Uh, he flew in a bucket of bolts, I think, as he called his Millennium Falcon. We're in the uh, Star Trek Enterprise here at uh, W360 Studios here in uh, downtown Bethlehem. Again, a lot to cover today here. Again, uh, sorry for the jocularity here, but had to do it. Uh, looking at severe weather, nothing uh, funny about this at all. We had 142 tornadoes, 320 hail events, and 315 wind events here just this past week alone. Now has tornadoes 10% above average. So you see the huge uptick we've made here in late April into May. Um, hail is still 23% below average, 5% below last year. And uh, wind is actually now exactly average, even though it's a little bit below average. We're adding that here today and going to add more of this, uh, unfortunately, on Monday with another severe weather outbreak. This uh, El Nino and Tonga volcano that blew up um, a couple years ago is just a catalyst for tons of moisture here. So if we look at year-to-date year -to rainfall again across the country here ending today for May, U.S. is the wettest in 26 years, second wettest in 39 years, 23% above average. And look at all those 30-inch-plus rainfall totals north of Houston into parts of Arkansas and the deep south. So very, very wet uh, here in the northeast. Again, uh, very, very wet as well. Again, not going to get 30 inches, but uh, extremely wet here year-to-date. We look at some of these little eye chart here, but uh, regional trends here in the northeast, we've now been the wettest in 13 years. Um, again, a top three, wettest in 39 years. North central U.S. is wettest in 11 years. Uh, northwest, wettest in seven. It's very mixed in the northwest. You either got very dry or very wet, but uh, it's a mixed bag. Southeast, west in three. South central, wettest in 33. They've added to that big time here this past week with the widespread flooding in Texas where they had seven plus inches. Uh, areas north of Houston. Um, southwest is, uh, again, drier than last year, but still way above average. Hard to believe here, we're just about 28 days, four weeks away from the official start of the hurricane season. Um, we issued our hurricane outlook, as you've probably seen some of our videos, last fall, uh, many, many months ago. That's what we do, year ahead. Um, but uh, this is our official outlook here, again, for the hurricane season. Red areas where we think there's high risk for landfall. Orange, moderate risk, yellow, lower risk. Uh, so very, very concerned. Texas has been our number one bullseye. Again, we think multiple systems impacting Texas this year, a deep south, key west, Florida. As you can see, we pretty much have a ring of fire around the uh, Caribbean islands. Again, this is going to be a very active Cape Verde season, we believe. Again, the mid-Atlantic um, main development area, just the water temperatures are off the scale. Number one hottest on record. With La Nina developing, we diminished all the wind shear. The, the only unknown here that could play a, a minor role, we do believe minor, because uh, there's too much moisture, too much energy in the atmosphere and the uh, oceans here. Um, it's just dust coming off Africa. So that may be a minimal inhibiting factor, but again, we do believe we're still headed for at least 24 systems, um, third most in record keeping, which goes back over 170 plus years. Uh, I think we do hear weather, well at Weather Trends is, uh, again, not only tell you the season outlook, uh, locations, but then uh, in-season, store impact, zip code impacts, you know, out a week. Um, again, so you know exactly what zip codes are influenced for seasonal sales. So retailers should check that out because it's uh, by retail store. So whether you're Walmart, Target, Kohl's, anybody, it'll show you uh, your stores that are impacted uh, days uh, in advance. We're going to definitely burn through probably this uh, only 21 official names in the, in the hurricane season's um, name list here. Again, this is the World Meteorological Organization helps with this. But uh, after that, we go to names 22 through 42. We used to use the Greek alphabet, uh, but now we're going with um, these official names from, um, I guess, the World Meteorological, Meteorological Organization. So, um, again, very likely we're going to get into name 22 um, this year. Uh, if you notice, Kirk and William was on the list here, so I'm going to be a... Have some famous hurricanes, hopefully, uh, with my name this year. Looking at last week's world summer here, weekending today here in the U.S., uh, 5.3 warmer than last year, warmest in three years, third warmest in 39 years, so a very, very warm week. 30% wetter, 37% wetter than a year ago, wettest in seven, third wettest in 39, so warm and wet. Retailers this time of year like uh, warm and dry, uh, so they had half the equation, but this was a very, very strong week to end the Q1 for retail seasonal suppliers uh, here ending. May 4th today, again, the last week of uh, Q1. So it should have been a very strong uh, week after kind of maybe a lull here since late March into early April with uh, mediocre weather at best. Um, look at Canada, cold, uh, again, uh, 4.7 cold in last year. Again, uh, about average, but again, splitting two half the country. Russia, China, Australia, all way below average. Um, hot spots would be India and Brazil, number one warmest in over 39 years. Um, on the world scene, obviously, we're still very wet. And number one wettest in uh, 39, probably records, 125 years. 
we quantify this for our big retail customers. You know, what does the power of one degree mean and how it influences seasonal sales? So we just key in here in the Northeast here that we had a good week. Again, it's going down here on the weekends, and that's what it's going to do next weekend, unfortunately. So we've had very, very warm, hot weather, you know, midweek. So 17 degrees hotter this week than last year. Last year, this week, uh, ending uh, April, May, was uh, the coldest in 18 years in the Northeast. This year, the hottest in 23 years. So that's 17 degree lift times our power of one degree rules of thumb for Everything you buy, beer, beverages, allergy, lettuce, fishing, spring apparel, sun care, you know, every, you name it, things you're buying. Um, should have been a very, very strong week with just a strong double-digit, even triple-digit sales gains here in the Northeast. Obviously pretty soft there in the Pacific Northwest where it was much, much colder, even snowing in the mountains um, than, than a year ago. So good Northeast, a bad Northwest for seasonal suppliers. This week here, again, again, another flip-flop pattern. Again, it's an amazing roller coaster ride here where we get uh, these cold, kind of gloomy weekends like we're having this week in the Northeast, and then uh, a big warm-up as we go into this week ahead here. So nationally, 0.2 cooler than last year, ninth warmest in 39 years, above average, but uh, again, on the cool side compared to a year ago. Uh, rainfall up 49%, wettest in five years, fourth wettest in 39 years, so much above average. Again, more severe weather to contend with, obviously, uh, today in the uh, steep south-central U.S., and then toward the middle of the week, it'll be uh, moving up into the central plains in the Midwest once again. And again, if we just look at the NOAA's three-day outlook here, again, you see all that enhanced severe weather activity, tornadoes and hail there in Texas, and then that uh, diminishes a bit maybe tomorrow, and then picks up again Monday in the in the heartland from Oklahoma up into Iowa. If we look at next week here, again, this is, uh, you know, skip through uh, Mother's Day, but again, um, it's cold, wet. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, Mother's Day weekend here uh, again, again in the Northeast. So it's been a good middles and unfortunately not so great weekends. Um, nationally, we're 1.6 colder than last year, coldest in three years, 11th warmest in 39 years, so above average. But again, the cool spots are going to be in the southeast, uh, southeast mid Atlantic in the west. Rainfall may be similar to last year, 19th dry, and 39th, so a hair below average again. So deep south, they need a break. Texas could certainly use a break with uh, all the flooding they had here this past week. So some good news there, and maybe diminishing the severe weather threat temporarily, uh, maybe shifting a bit north uh, up into the upper Midwest, so the Nebraska's up into Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the Great Lakes. Uh, so we'll see here if the severe weather takes a break for people that just don't want any more severe weather in the south, central U.S., Aggregating these world two-week outlook trends here again through the 18th of May. Again, generally a warm east. Again, weekends are cool in the east, unfortunately. Uh, cooler west, big warm-up in Canada. Uh, Western Europe looks warm. Uh, Eastern Europe looks cold. Moscow and Russia continues their cold trend. And we just aggregate all these uh, rainfall trends here. So again, general theme is uh, pretty wet across uh, North America. Brazil drying out big time here. So again, uh, right where they grow their crops is a very dry week for sure. So with that, folks, we hope you have a great week ahead, and uh, we'll be back here again this time next week. Mm -hmm.